Hello, hello, and welcome to this live session. Today we are talking about, oh, I've got sun right in my eyes. Uh, today we're talking about how to tell if your R1 ideas are competitive enough. And the reason that I want to talk about this today is that this is something that I hear a lot, actually. Um, and most often it's in the context uh, of the transition between your career development award and an R01 level application, right? And so if you're new to me, uh, I, I'll introduce myself quickly. So I'm Sarah Dobson. I am a research grant consultant and an academic career coach. And I run a program helping women faculty make the transition from their K awards to R01 level funding. And so that's the context where I hear this worry, this concern, this question most often around, are my R01 ideas competitive enough? So I wanted to talk about that today and I'm just gonna pull up some notes that I've taken here, um, but let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Um, and certainly if you have any questions, be sure to um, be sure to pop them in the chat. Um, a couple of other housekeeping notes before we dive in. So if you know somebody who ought to see this video, please share it with them. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. Uh, I will be happy to answer them now while we're live, or if you're catching this later on a replay, please feel free to ask your questions then, and I will uh, I will answer when I see the, uh, the question later on. The third thing is, uh, if you hear anything uh, as part of this conversation, if something strikes you as really important or useful, um, please type that in the chat as well for the benefit of the other participants, either now live or later on. So there we go. Uh, let me just pull up my notes here and we will get started. <laughs> I'm still trying to um, hide from the sunlight that's pretty much directly in my eyes, but anyway, not important. Okay, so yeah, so today we're talking about how to tell if your R1 ideas are competitive enough and um, I wanna talk a little bit about what's at the root of that question and what to do about it, right? So this worry that you don't have any R1 level ideas usually comes hand in hand with a worry about making this big leap from a career development award to a research project grant, right? Again, this is the context in which I hear this question most often, but I know <laughs> that it's probably a, a broader concern and, um, you know, it's it's a concern generally with the the competitiveness of um, of R one level applications, right? Um, but specifically in this context of transitioning from your career development award to an R one, what you've been told over and over again is that your career development award was about you, and the R one is about the science, right? And because you've had that success getting funded based on you, based on your potential which is of course what the K award is all about, you start to worry that you can't actually deliver on that potential when it comes to getting an R01. And you know, when you consider the, the competitiveness of the R01, the success rates, the pay lines, um, it, there's 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 lots to worry about, not to mention, you know, hearing about other colleagues who've fallen off the K cliff. It's it's anxiety inducing, right? And what you really want to know is whether your research idea holds up, whether it's fundable, whether it's competitive. You want to feel confident that you can be successful as you move from this next stage of your career. And so I'm just going to check in and see if that's resonating with folks. Again, just let me know in the chat uh, if that is if that's landing, if that's making sense to you. Um, so I'll just keep an eye on that um, as I keep going through um, yeah going through the material here. So all right. So the the reason that you are feeling this way that you're that you're experiencing this level of worry this anxiety about not having r1 level ideas is that you're still thinking of yourself as a mentee right a trainee and you're looking to other people for answers and for confirmation and part of that is a lack of confidence in your own ideas and underneath that lack of confidence i would argue is uncertainty about the contribution that you want to make in your field. And this is really what I want to talk about today, okay? So 
there are two main ways to 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 tackle this and to approach this um, this worry and this anxiety around whether your R1 ideas are competitive enough or whether you even have R1 caliber ideas in the first place, right? The first thing is that you need to move out of that sort of mentee mindset and start thinking of yourself as a leader and as a principal investigator rather than a mentee, right? And that's going to allow you to take control of your career in a way that you probably haven't yet. So that's, that's part of it. The other big part of it is figuring out what that contribution is that you want to make, right? What's the big scientific or clinical or population level challenges that you want to tackle? What do you want your impact to be? What gets you fired up? What would be really exciting for you to chip away at over the next decade, the next 15 years, just for starters, right? That's what you need to think about. And so one of the ways that I frame this for folks is as like if you think about the scientific literature as a as a conversation as a cocktail party right so imagine you're at a cocktail party and there are little conversations happening in smaller groups throughout this this larger room that you're in right that that let's use that as an analogy for the scientific literature, right? So first of all, you have to figure out which one of those conversations you want to join. Okay, what, which conversations are interesting to you? If you're sort of eavesdropping on those conversations, which ones are most compelling? Which ones are most interesting, right? So that's the first aspect of it. And then the next aspect is once you've figured out which conversations you want to join, what is the actual contribution that you want to be making to that conversation? What do you want to add to the conversation? How do you want to move that conversation forward? Instead of just, you know, lingering on the sidelines of the conversation or agreeing with everybody else who's, who's having a lively conversation, what do you want to add to it? What is, what is your piece to contribute? And that's really how you need to think about this next stage of your career and how you really need to think about developing those R01 level ideas, right? Because once you have figured that out, once you figure out where you want to contribute, what sort of impact you want to make, what the big challenges are that you want to work on, then you end up with an infinite number <laughs> of R01 caliber ideas, right? Then, then you know, you've turned on the faucet and it is... Um, you know, you, you will have more ideas than you can possibly tackle in the rest of your career. But you really need to figure out what that conversation is and how you want to contribute. And part of that is around your unique skills and experiences and expertise and, and interest, right? And once you have a good sense of that, then that's really what opens the gates to developing those R01 level ideas, those you know, conceptually deep ideas that are going to take, you know, a, you know, a fair number of years to actually work on in a, in a discrete project, right? So that's really, that's really the goal here. That's really what you're trying to, um, you're, you're, that's what you're aiming for, right? Is, is figuring out what that contribution actually is. So again, I'm going to pause here and check in, see how that's landing with people. Just let me know, um, let me know in the chat um, how that is, uh, how that's going for you. Um, and I am just going to check my notes again. Right. So when you start thinking of your, when you start thinking of your research from that perspective, from that sort of conversational contribution perspective, that's that's when you can start to see how how the the big juicy scientific problems that you want to solve are um, can be broken out into smaller sort of gaps in knowledge that you're trying to fill along the way and and you can sort of see it in terms of a trajectory right and that's really one of the things that you need to be doing in uh, an R1 application is demonstrating this sort of trajectory you're on to solve a, a wider problem right? And so 
that again, that's, that's one piece of it. And if we go back to the earlier piece around getting away from thinking of yourself as a mentee and thinking of yourself more as a, as a leader, as, uh, as a PI, um, when you start thinking of yourself that way, you can really start to prioritize how you're going to make that impact, how you're going to make that contribution to the conversations through grants and papers. Uh, and, and you can really sort of see, see where you're going and, and take more control of where you're going than, than you might be feeling right now, right? So that's, um, that's how you sort of address that anxiety around whether or not you have R01 caliber ideas, right? So the action that I want you to take today is to think about what you find exciting about your research, right? What, what fires you up? What, what is really interesting to you? What are you really passionate about? And then how does that tie into those big scientific or clinical or population level problems that you want to be solving? Okay, so that's your takeaway for today. And so if you found this video helpful and you're looking for some support as you transition from your career development award to your first R1, uh, I do run a K to R transition program for women faculty that can help you make that leap successfully. And so if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, I invite you to book a call with me. There's a link in the video description here um, that will send you to an application page. And that's where you can book a call with me. And uh, I'd love to hear about you and your particular situation and uh, see if you are a good fit for the program. So I will once again check in. I don't see any comments or questions from folks, and that might be an error on my part uh, in not really, um, you know, being able to, to see what I need to see on the screen here. But um, if you do have any questions, um, yeah, please let me know, and I am happy to answer them. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody.